Hello friends, welcome to this session. We are in the last stages of our course. We have already uh, covered uh, important topics such as importance of data collection, importance of validity, importance of measurements and now I think we are in a position to now understand the importance of the principles of data management and analysis. Today we are going to cover two areas, one database management, the other one on data analysis strategy. Data management includes the following, defining variables, creating a study database and a data dictionary about which I am going to expand, entering the data and correct the errors, create a data set for data analysis, backing up the data and archiving the data set. Today we are going to cover the key elements of data management including data structure, data entry, individual and aggregated databases, uh, mother and daughter databases. What is data structure? For some of you uh, who may be new to the word database, this is an example of a database. Each of these lines, these horizontal lines represent records pertaining to one uh, particular individual. Each of these columns represent uh, variables, the information that is collected on certain variables based on the study question. We need to initially formulate the entire plan of how the data is going to be managed. That can come in the form of what is called data documentation. It can talk about the structure, meaning the name, number of records and other relevant information about the structure, the variables in terms of the name, what values that are assigned to, the coding, etc. And the history of this database in terms of when it was created, when it was modified, the storage related information in which media it is going to be stored, where and how it is going to be backed up and any other relevant uh, additional information. These are recorded in, in terms of the structure. Let us look at the first uh, of the important um, elements in database. This is called identifier. This identifier has to be unique and that is why it is called unique identifier. It is maintained by a computerized index and uh, this particular unique identifier has to be secured by a procedure, a quality assurance procedure that guarantees that uh, each of these data has its own internal uh, validity. The code can uh, comprise information that uh, uh, will talk about that particular individual. For example, it can have seven digits. Each of these digits or set of digits can refer to a specific uh, uh, identifier information about that particular individual about which uh, about whom the data was uh, collected. For example, in this uh, uh, example, the first and uh, the second digit can denote uh, the village or area. The next set of two digits, the third and fourth may denote street. The digit number uh, 5 may indicate the house or you know, flat or residence, uh, door number. The last two digits can denote uh, the person's uh, uh, sequential number. Therefore, the seven digit may represent uh, the, about that particular individual and by parts it can give information. You need to specify uh, certain things about variables. The variable as you might have seen in the lecture on uh, measurement. There are different types of uh, variables that uh, do exist and uh, therefore it requires your attention in the beginning itself. You need to specify whether uh, the variable uh, will be uh, entered as digits or if it is a numeric whether the number of decimals are important. The variables can be entered as uh, length in which case you need to specify the length and it is preferable that when you are entering as both text and number you turn all the letters into capitals to avoid uh, uh, errors uh, which can uh, cause a lot of problem in data analysis. And finally, you can have uh, dates in a specific format. When I say specific format, you need to specify whether it is in entered as the Indian format date, month and year in four digits or month, 
month, date and then year. This has to be specified in the structure of the variable. While creating the variable names which pertain to your uh, data collection instrument about which you will uh, have a clear idea later part of the course, you need to be very clear. The name, variable name should refer to an item in your data collection instrument. It has to be understandable format. For example, if the questionnaire item is about exercising whether the individual exercises daily or not, the variable name could be EXER daily, exercise daily. That clearly denotes uh, what questionnaire item it refers to. The second important criteria is in terms of uh, keeping it short leaving no space between the uh, between the letters of the variable name. Most softwares may require less than 10 characters therefore, you have to be very choosy at the same time it is uh, self explanatory. The third important uh, uh, aspect is be consistent. For example, for different types of uh, response to a question on uh, how frequently somebody exercises exercising daily in the past can be denoted by EXERPAST exercise past that clearly you know self explanatory about that particular questionnaire item. If it is currently daily then it is uh, coded accordingly. If it is past uh, occasionally the, those words are given in the variable name. So, that by looking at the variable name the investigator can easily identify ok this is the variable uh, this is the questionnaire item it refers to. And finally, you may have uh, variables collected as such. These are called crude variables. For example, it, it may refer to number of uh, times one exercises. It could be 3 times, 4 times, 5 times a day. And finally, you may decide to regroup them into two categories, exercised or not. In which case, you can denote that variable as exercise in the crude uh, variable as such when the data was collected you can change into exercise underscore 1 2 which denotes it is dichotomized. It is dichotomized into exercised or not. So, you have to be consistent in the pattern by which you create variable names and finally, it is very important that you assign a variable name. Otherwise, if the software is left to assign a variable name by itself, it can create lot of confusion including duplicates. Uh, of similar items within the questionnaire. When you are designing a data collection instrument about which uh, my, uh, my colleague is going to expand in the later part of uh, this course, it is important that the design itself you are very clear about broad sections of the questionnaire. So, that when it is converted into a database you know that there are sections that you have to enter. For example, there is a section called identifiers, there is a section called you know demographics which means you know one talks about age, gender, uh, community and family related issues. And then the third section called outcome is about the problem in the question and or disease if it is uh, related to typically clinical related information. And finally, uh, another section called exposure in which you can talk about all the variables that you are going to measure including uh, what Dr. Uh, Tarun might have already talked to you about. Uh, third factors uh, including confounders. Finally, the instrument should allow an auto coding. If you collect information on exercise daily, yes, no. If it is re already written as 1, 2, we need to enter into the database 1 or 2. We do not have to code it again. So, that is what is meant by auto coding. So, the data collection instrument should be designed in a way that it facilitates uh, data entry design easy. An important uh, uh, aspect of data entry is all about coding. It is always preferable to have a numerical coding. Of course, you, you would have seen uh, uh, if it is a textual information in the form of qualitative there is a different way of dealing with it. But with reference to this session we are talking about uh, quantitative data analysis. So, it is preferable to have numerical coding. In particular, you need to decide on how you will code missing values. It could be in the form of a dot or uh, depending on the field you may uh, choose to enter as 9999999. Nine, nine, nine. Be careful uh, you do not enter you know 
the missing value for age is 99 that can mean differently. And if it is not applicable, you enter with a, uh, with a consistently with a particular coding in the data collection instrument. For beginners with uh, inadequate experience in handling databases, it is advisable do not uh, create cumbersome codes. This is equally advisable for senior researchers. For example, if you have a field, do you walk every day walking as a variable, do you cycle every day as another questioner? You have two variable names walking and cycling. Do you do both and then there is a coding and somebody very innovatively thought walking and cycling if somebody is engaged we will give a coding as uh, uh, 12 which is basically 1 and 2 combined but that is not going to be helpful uh, when you analyze uh, information. And last but very important this is very critical because uh, most of the times we may be dealing with the dichotomized variable. So, you need to be very clear that you are going to give 1 for yes, 0 for no or 1 for yes, 2 for no or 1 for present and 2 for absent as, as a baseline for all the gradients. Some of the softwares have a different understanding of this 1 and 0. So, when it comes to analysis, so you need to be careful about your uh, software related uh, details also. Finally, when it comes to data entry, you need to have what is called the catalog. Before uh, the data entry uh, is made, you create what is called a data dictionary or a variable catalog in which you talk about each of these variables, which questionnaire item it refers to, what are the vari values that will be assigned to this variable, what is the meaning of the each of these value in a particular format. Some of the softwares generate on their own this data dictionary as a catalog, variable catalog, but then it is preferable that you develop uh, your own uh, data dictionary for your study in which you refer first to the question item, the variable name that you have given, the type of uh, uh, variable, the format in which data is collected, the values that are assigned to and some logical checks if any. This is written so that uh, if it, this database is shared with others, the person can make use of the data dictionary and uh, can do the analysis on his or her own. It is equally important for you if you uh, after some time has lapsed, you go back to the database, it gives you an idea what you have done and what is the, what is it all about for each of these variables and it helps you later when you want to analyze your data again. Before data entry, one makes sure that there are checks and balances. This is also very uh, important from ensuring uh, internal uh, validity. You specify uh, minimum and maximum values that can enter into a particular field. For example, if your study is about uh, children up to 5 years, the age column will not entertain anything more than 5 years at the time of data entry itself. So that it, 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 it minimizes the errors that can come in even at the time of data entry so that these will be uh, acceptable at the time of entry. You may specify skip patterns. For example, if you ask a question do you exercise and that person says no, then you can skip a lot of questions about uh, type of exercise, frequency, nature, intensity and things like that. So, skip patterns are very useful even at the time of data entry. And then of course, we talked about um, automatic coding. When you enter that uh, code, it automatically denotes something that is uh, referred to in the data collection instrument and that can be analyzed immediately. There may be certain times need for copying data from the preceding record, it, you know for example, lab results if they have to be carried forward to another section, it, it can get copied uh, by itself. This can be specified in the database and finally, some calculations. For example, you may collect height and weight data, but you may not calculate uh, body mass index by your own in the data collection instrument. You can ask uh, the database to do it when you enter height and weight, it automatically calculates BMI. So, these specifications are necessary before data entry is made. While you enter the data, it is important that we see this as an opportunity for cleaning the database. For example, you enter uh, a data and you find that there are some notes you need to write, there are some clarifications that you need because you do not think that uh, that is appropriate. So, it, it, it serves a purpose of cleaning. The, the data entry person refers this back to the investigator for uh, 
additional inputs to cleanly clean up the data. You can use checks while entering the data, which we also discussed as an automated check within the database. You have to mark each paper as, did, as and when the data entry is completed, so that the duplicates are not entered. And uh, after the data is entered, you may have to validate by different means. So therefore, data entry is one step uh, in the uh, clean, data cleaning aspect. We talked about individual and aggregate databases. We showed you a uh, database, that is an individual database. Each record in the horizontal line is an observation. There could be instances in which you may have uh, aggregated databases, where you may enter counts in each of the records. If you enter only one count uh, by record, that is uh, ideal, that is called a normalized database, because normalized database in which each of the rows contain only one count for that particular record, it facilitates uh, aggregation by a vertical. I will show you what it is. For example, uh, on the left hand side, you see an example of uh, individual data uh, about people in whom uh, place, age, gender and onset. So each of these records indicate an individual and at the same time we can have aggregate data for example, uh, by place one can also get number of people affected, number of people having problem and things like that. So this is an aggregated data by place. whereas the, the, the red color uh, database shows the individual uh, data. There can be an instance in which you may have uh, what is called mother and data, daughter database. You may collect information at various levels. You may collect information at the village level. You may collect information at the household level. You may collect information at the individual in the household. You may collect within an individual information about several episodes of uh, illness or different uh, problems uh, in that individual using different questionnaire. So, in essence, you may have information about different levels. That does not mean, you know, you repeat the information in all the levels uh, for that particular uh, individual. Uh, for example, for that individual, you write information about the house. For that individual, you write information about the village not necessary. You can keep them at their level and then at the time of data analysis, you can link the database that comes from village with database that comes from household. You can link the database that comes from household to the individual so that you can sensibly analyze. You do not have to worry about uh, keeping everything together and get confused uh, at the time of data analysis. For example, this is a household level data where you have information about uh, the house ID, location, the house as such, its community status and its uh, income. The individual in the house may have information pertaining to whether they have a disease or not or they are exposed to particular factor or not. So you can see here, the house ID is repeated here. The person ID for that particular first household is indicated here and diseased or not or exposed or not are given here. These are two different databases entered differently. One is a household database, another is an individual house database. We can link them as and when necessary using this connection called house ID, which is common to both the databases. There is a procedure by which we can do this in softwares. You can even um, merge these files if needed. Summing up on the data management, we need to code databases numerically. We need to enter data using qualitation procedures, which I outlined. We need to store information at the level where it needs to be stored and we can relate or merge files when needed and as required. Thank you very much.